Yeah. Get high, rapper. The man hour. You already know. It's live. It's raw. It's going down. Like this. I'm going around and letting everybody know that they welcome to the show. Yep. It's the latest thing you've ever seen. You already know. No. Let me introduce you to your host of the hour. If you Mike and Mike. Mike and Mike. Yeah, it's the man hour. Yep. Got the hottest plays, uh, all the breaking news. Yeah. Every rumor, every trade, every breaking bruise. Mm-hmm. Tighten up the screws. Yeah, it's going down. Have you saying what the fuck? Oh. It never watered down. Woo. It's going down. I'll be rolling up. Yep. And if you buy it or you sell it, then you made the cut. Watch you flip it back. I can double up. I got some ratchet for that ass. I'ma burn it up. Gotta check the rules and know that it be fair foul. Rap go the whistle, coach throw the towel. We can do this on the field or side the lines. It's the man now and though. Now we going live. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakashi here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com and check out the merchandise page. And of course, check out the blog section as well as do upload blogs as frequently as we can over there. But if you head over to the merchandise page right here, right now, you can use promo code SUNSET and you'll get up to 20% off all your purchase, purchases over there at manhourradio.com. On the merchandise page, promo code Sunset. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Pickamores.com. That's www.p-i-c-k-e-m wars.com. You guys can play for free and win real money over there over at pickamores.com. You simply pick the games that you want to win, or I mean you you can pick all the all of the NFL games, you pick the college games or USC games over there, major league baseball games. It's pickamores.com, guys. Sign up for free. Uh, use promo code MANHOUR or just tell MANHOUR sent you. There is no promo code because it is all free. So pickamores.com is the sponsor of tonight's show. So big shout out to those guys and David and all and, and the rest of the crew over there. So we do got a great show, guys. We lined up today. We are going to talk Justin Fields and Andy Dalton. Uh, Justin Fields has got in the reins there in Chicago. So we'll talk about that. Tua. We're going to talk about some big Ben action. We had way or no way light up right by Thrive Fantasy, but uh, it's just me tonight, so we, 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 we can definitely not do a way or no way. But the biggest aspect of the show tonight is, we guys, we, we do have the NFL power rankings tonight. So Mr. Grammy Wallace will be uh, joining us tonight here on the Old Man Hour, and and uh, and uh, and uh, Mr. Wallace will be uh, hammering out those uh, mm. rest of the top 16 yeah, uh, power rankings for us. So it, we have already released the bottom 16. If you guys haven't uh, been so all like, all like already, you should be following us on Twitter, man underscore hour underscore radio on the old Twitter machine. And we have all 16 uh, rankings out there right now. Uh, so big shout out to Graham over there. And uh, you know, he'll be joining us here in about a half hour to 45 minutes. Uh, big shout out to Drew. What's going on to Drew tonight? Uh, howdy buck. Uh, as he says, howdy Drew. I hope you're having a great night there. Good sir. But guys, it is time to get in to basically what everybody has been talking about here. You know, the last, I don't know, eight or nine hours that, that, you know, since the news has broke and uh, that is that Justin Fields will be starting week three uh in place of Andy Dalton so Andy Dalton has a sprained knee um Matt Nagy did come out and say that it is not a, it is not an ACL so that that is positive news if you are an Andy Dalton fan like I am I do think Andy Dalton is a top 15 quarterback in the league if he is given a given a like a like a chance but obviously you know he he hasn't been able to really get his footing ever since he's left Cincinnati he was like he was a backup quarterback in Dallas and you know he got knocked out uh pretty pretty uh pretty viciously if you guys remember by good old uh Chase Young there but Justin Fields has been named starter uh for the week uh, week 3 for the Chicago Bears and they will be traveling to Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns so the, I mean obviously guys the Cleveland Browns is a pretty pretty solid defensive team you know they they held kansas city down and you know the browns are the browns i mean like not like the old school browns but the browns are a much better much improved many people are picking them to go to the uh at least the afc title game this year so it is definitely going to be a a test for justin fields so the question that i'm going to propose to everybody out there in the 
in the uh, YouTube world here, youtube.com forward slash man hour and big X sports radio 96.1. You can listen to us every day at four through 6 PM on their Monday through Friday is, is Andy Dalton ever going to get his starting job back? And, uh, We've heard what we've heard what Matt Nagy had to say. Matt Nagy said, "Hey, this is Andy's job. Once he comes back, you know, uh, you know, this is his job. Tua or not, not Tua. Uh, Fields is just here as a placeholder because you know Dalton is injured. And guys, Matt Nagy has to be talking out both both ends of his mouth right now. There is there is no way that he can go back to Andy Dalton after Justin Fields. I mean, because like." Justin Fields is the future of the team. Let's just be flat out honest. Justin Fields is is the future of this team. He he is the um, heir to the throne, or w- whatever words you want to use. It's just it, it is coming sooner than we all expected. Uh, Mister BC Combs said that you know by week four. Uh, I I said maybe week one by next year, but cer- certainly not week three. Uh, so with all that being said. We have to ask this question. Let's say Justin Fields has a successful rest of the season. Let's say, you know, you know he leads him to eight wins the, the, this season. I mean, obviously that 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 that, that is a winning underneath uh, Justin Fields as a starter. Obviously not a team win, but as a winner, Justin Fields would be a winning quarterback at that point. Does Matt Nagy lose his job after that point? And I have to say yes. I think if Justin Fields is successful, I think Matt Nagy will lose his job. Why? Because everybody's going to be questioning, well, why didn't Justin Fields start week one? Why didn't Justin Fields start week two? Why did you have to wait until Andy Dalton got hurt to put Justin Fields Fields, Fields in there? Matt Nagy is playing with a double-edged sword right now, and quite frankly, it is not on, on his favor. He has a sharp end on this side, this side of the neck, and the sharp end on the other side uh, of the neck. So he pretty much has to hope that Justin Fields is just bad enough to, you know, keep his job, but not too good to make his lo- lo- lose his job either. He is definitely have to toe that line a like a tad bit. And I see over there on the old Twitter machine. Uh, we are streaming this live on Twitter tonight at like as well. Man underscore hour underscore radio. They ask, why do you think Matt Nagy will lose his job? Because I think Matt Nagy will lose his job because one, Justin Fields, let's say he is better than Andy Dalton, which which I'm not saying he is not, but I think Justin Fields is better than Andy Dalton uh, right now. Um, basically, I like at least athletically wise and every aspect of the game besides the actual, you know, mindset of of preparing for a game people are going to question well why didn't you start him week one and how, how do you answer that if you're matt Nagy? i don't think you can answer that to be flat out honest like i don't think you can answer well i i started andy dolan because he's a veteran i mean yes i've sat here and said that justin fields needed to sit a year uh, yes i that's the only way that that's the only reason why that's the only way Matt Nagy would have been able to keep his job this year is if Justin Fields fat, sat the whole year. Because the minute you put Justin Fields in there and he starts lighting it up, kind of, kind of, kind of like how La, Lamar Jackson came in, what week nine his rookie year and lit it up. I think he even led him to the playoffs. And people are questioning, well, why, why wasn't he playing the full season? Luckily, John Harbaugh, you know, had a good team and a good re- repertoire. Oh, like over there, Matt Nagy does not have that, so it, it's definitely going to be questioned a lot why Justin Fields wasn't in there. So then the next question has to be proposed here. This was geared toward uh, Brandon Combs, obviously, because you guys, because you guys know he is a bears guy bears through and through Chicago Cubs. You know, I got them on the old TV back there watching them and, and, and like whatnot, but in a perfect world, do the bears make the playoffs? And I met by like a perfect world. Let's say Matt Nagy, changes his play calling to match Justin Fields ability, rolling the pocket, having that moving pocket, not, not really running like RPOs, but, but, you know, running some type of read option plays, not true RPOs, but you guys get what I'm saying there. In a perfect world, do the pairs make the playoffs with Justin Fields at the helm and looking at their schedule, moving or moving forward. I'm going to go hell. No, I mean, they just like Combs said, they have a hard ass schedule. I mean, they play the Browns next, 
that's so that's probably going to be a loss. Let's just let's, let, let's just be honest. They're playing the Lions the next, or the, like at least the Lions are at home. That's probably a win. They're playing a good Raiders team. They're playing a Packers team. Bucks, 49ers. I mean, guys, honestly, looking forward right now, the Bears might only have three wins on their schedule, no matter who the quarterback is. So those three wins that, that I have are the Giants, the Lions once, and then obviously they, they have one win versus the Cincinnati Bengals last week. So I think that's the only that's the only hey, way how – so in, in a perfect world, can they make the playoffs? Absolutely not. The, the Bears are not going to the playoffs there whatsoever. The only way they can get going to the playoffs is if Nick Foles comes in and does his magic that he, that he did with Philly uh, when they went to that Super Bowl run. So – Sorry, Bears Bears fans. There is no way, no how you guys are making the playoffs this year. So moving on to the next topic here. Man, my Miami, can you guys legitimately catch a break? Because I don't think you guys can. Because the Miami Dolphins, guys, Tua, Tua will be out week three for Miami Dolphins uh, when they play the Raiders in week three. He has broken ribs and, you know, Obviously, it was uh, diagnosed as a bruise at first, but um, upon further investigation, as they like to like to say, he has broken ribs and he will not be playing week three. Um, Jacoby Brissett will be taking the helm there in place of Mr. Tua. And so, guys, does Tua get his job back when he is healthy? Does Tua have a chance to get his job if he's healthy? No, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say no, not at all. Tua has been a below average quarterback at best. He's only completing 58% of his passes, and he he kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? He looks like dog shit. Let's just be flat honest. He looks bad out bad out there. Yes, I know you Tua fans, you Miami fans are bumping your chest. Tua's great. Tua's great. Tua's great. No, he is not great right now he looks bad he looks out of place and he looks like a person that is pressing a little bit he is looking looking like a person that is trying to find his way that now that his mentor is gone aka ryan fitzpatrick that his bailer outer is gone aka ryan fitzpatrick so when jacoby Brissett takes this team and they beat the Las Vegas Raiders in Las Vegas in week three. I believe it's in Las Vegas, I should say. Jacoby Brissett probably is not going to give this team back. There, there, there is no way that Brian Flores can legitimately look at the locker room and say Tua is our best chance to win when Jacoby Brissett goes out there and throws for 280 yards, the 27 for 35, three touchdowns through the air. And the team looks great, and like, and the team looks like they did with when, like Ryan Fitz, when Ryan Fitzpatrick was 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 at the helm last year. If you guys want to flash back to 2020, the Miami Dolphins were in the heat of a playoff run, were they not? They were, they they were poised to make that playoff run, and then Brian Flores uh, said, "You know what, Ryan? You know, we're we're going into a bye week here." And uh, Tua, you know, we we spent a draft pick on Tua, and we know you're doing great. We know you're having the best season of your career, you know, and with your 15 other teams. But, but you know what? It's it's Tua time here in Miami. It is time to op- op- open up that can of tuna and just put Tua in there, right? Now that Ryan Fitzpatrick is is gone, Jacoby Brissett is there. Jacoby Brissett is not a Ryan Fitz Fitzpatrick. He is not a somebody that's, that's going to like lead you and ment- mentor you, ment- mentor your, mentor your you, and come bail you out type of thing. But Joe, but Jacoby Brissett, like he is a guy that's fighting for us a starting job. Let's just be flat out honest. He 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 got the short end of the stick in Indianapolis when when they when uh, when you know he was kind of just thrown in the fire there when Andrew Luck retired unexpectedly like two weeks before the season started so they you know they had a bad season and it made Jacoby look bad because they built the team for Andrew Luck and then you know when when he finally started to roll they brought in Philip Rivers because they didn't have faith in him and then he got traded to Miami to put behind Tua so with with all that being said guys 
if and when Jacoby Brissett comes in there and lights it up versus the Las Vegas Raiders, which is overrated, I might add, he is not going to give that bag. If Tua gets that job back, Brian Flores is going to lose that locker room. Much like what uh, Brandon Collins was saying about, you know, Justin Fields and Matt and Nagy, how like, you know, every, everybody wants Justin Fields to like play. I feel like everybody's going to want Ju- Ju- Jacoby Brissett to stay in there because Tua is sucking right now. 58% of your passes. I believe your Q, I believe your QBR is like only like 30 or 40. Like I didn't pull up the, the QBR stats, but it's just, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. Let's just be flat on. It is absolutely ridiculous the way he is playing right now. He, he, he's not looking like a number one pick. I mean, a first, a first, first round pick. I should, I should say, I mean, he just doesn't look like it. So let's go ahead and jump into the chat here. And, uh, Drew says Flores was an idiot for waffling between Fitz and Tua. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Drew, you are exactly right. Like once, once you put in a quarterback to take over a starting job, a starting job that guys, let's just be honest. Ryan Fitzpatrick was looking damn good. Uh, he was leading the Miami Dolphins to the playoffs. I believe that at the time they had they were six and two or something to that effect. I don't, I don't re- re- remember the. Uh, schedule off the top of my head, but you know, they were in a, they were second in that division behind Buffalo. They were firmly in the wild card race. And once that bye week hit, he started waffling, just like what Drew's saying, hashtag waffle, Mr. Wyatt Williams. He was waffling between two quarterbacks. He would start Tua and then Ryan Fitzpatrick would come out to bail him out. So people say, Oh, Tua won X, X, Y, Z games, but Tua came in the fourth quarter and won that for you right there. Mr. Tua. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, Brian Flores just needs to stick with the guy and stick w- with him. Uh, so whether it's Tua or Jacoby, you have to stick to the guy. No matter what, no, no more waffling back and forth here. Drew also says that he believes the Raiders are going to be a force to be reckoned with it th- this year. Ooh, 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 ooh. So here's the thing about the Raiders here. Uh, Mr. Drew. Every time we start to buy stock into the uh, Vegas Raiders, whether it be the Oakland Raiders, the LA Raiders, or the Vegas Raid Raiders, every time you start to you start to buy you start you start to buy stock into them, the stock goes down. It plummets. Once you sell that stock, oh, they're done. They're done. They're done. They somehow they rattle off eight wins. So, so the Vegas Raiders are an habitual eight and eight team. Yes, I know we have seventeen games this year, but they they are they will find a way to be eight and eight this this year. Hell, they might be seven and seven and three. <laughs> you know, they are going to be a five hundred team this year somehow, some way. It just that that's just who the Raiders are. They have all the talent in the world, just like Dallas Cowboys do. Derek Carr is a top tier quarterback. He's a damn good quarterback. He's improving every year that he is on the field. But yet, trade rumors still circulate him every off season, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then, but the Raiders, they are just a underperforming team year in and year out. And I don't know if it's the culture, I don't know if it's the coaching, I don't know if it's X Y Z, I don't know if it's the ownership, I don't know if it's the DJ in the end zone playing playing the wrong song. They are just a team that you cannot buy in and have faith in. Let me repeat that, Drew. They are just a team that you cannot buy in and have faith in. And, and, and yes, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. And there might be a little bit of bias in there because I'm scared of the Raiders. Yes, the Raiders are a good team on paper. The first week, they looked decent, fourth quarter and on. You know, they were opposite of the Falcons. You know, fourth quarter on, they look good. First three quarters are like, meh, it's just the same old Ray, Ray, Ray Raiders that are hanging around, but they don't know how to win. Week two, okay, they they may be surprises by beating the Steelers, but we'll talk into the Steelers here, here, here next. Maybe, maybe the Steelers are just not as good as we thought they were. And then, so this week, the, the the Raiders play Miami, and Miami isn't as good as we thought they were going to be. You know, many people had I, I think hell, I think Tory had them going eleven and five, or or sorry, twelve and five, or something. To, it was something ridiculous. Yes, it was second in the division because the, he had the Bills going fourteen and three, but still, like twelve wins for Miami. There's no way they're getting twelve wins right now whatsoever. So, I I I, I see your Raiders, but I'm going to trump you fifteen other other teams just just in the or five other teams in the AFC that that is better. 
uh, than the Raiders, unfortunately. So before I get off of the Tua in Miami topic, I have to propose a question to every to every, everybody that is listening tonight here at manhourradio.com and of course youtube.com forward slash manhour. If you have to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Please do that right now as 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 uh you know as the viewership is going up and down. So just guys, just hit that like button, share this with a couple friends as like I like as well. So this is to a second full season in the NFL, right? So we've seen him play at Alabama, Oklahoma, you know, and, and now his second year in the NFL. Are we ready to put the injury prone on Tua? Because he's had that hip injury. He had the ankle injury a uh, year one. Now he has the broken rib. Yes, I guess I like, like a lot. I like, I know he, he got popped to break those ribs, but are we ready to mark him as injury prone? Are we ready to mark him as Carson Wentz 2.0? Because let's just be honest, has he? Can he play a full 16 games? I don't think he can. Or 17 games. I don't think Tua is able is going to be able to play a full 17 game season the way he is currently con- currently constructed. So I don't know if he needs to put on some pounds. I don't know if he take need, needs to take off some weight to get more. I, I don't like faster so he can elude those guys. But either way, he's definitely injury prone. So before we head into our first break of the night and here in about 15, 20 minutes, Grammy, sorry, keep saying his name wrong. Grandma Wallace will be joining us uh, here with the NFL power ranking. So stay tuned for that. I'm getting excited to have Graham on, on here. Uh, So uh, let me jump back into the chat here. Uh, Drew says, I believe it comes from the ownership and the snowballs downhill. So yeah, I mean, well, I, I believe it's Al Davis Jr. is the owner's name right now, since you know Al Davis died and then his son is now in, like in charge. I, the, let's just call him Junior because I don't know if it's Al Davis Jr. or like or not. But he 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 definitely doesn't know how he doesn't know football. When I say he doesn't know football, like I'm not talking about the back office. He he is obviously a marketing genius, right? He is in Vegas. People are going to come to Vegas just for the atmosphere and you know, all this other stuff, yada, 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 yada. But, uh, but with, but with that being said, he, he doesn't know football. He needs John Madden back to teach him some football, right? Now that's football, right? He, he, he needs good old John Madden over, over there to help him out. And it just, but at some point, like your general manager, what's his name? Uh, they got him from the bucks, I think. Right. But like the, John Gruden and the general manager, uh, his name slipped in my mind. Right, 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 right. Now, Tory wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know that. Like the ownership doesn't need to know football if you have a good general manager, right? Just so, like me, like I know what to do in the back office. So Tory and Combs don't, don't, don't have to. So they're a good boss and let me handle this because you know I do the back office stuff well, and then they. You know, and then they talk to sports well. So it's just, it is definitely a working relationship that he needs to figure out. Uh, Drew says, I am a Chiefs fan, number one, as like, like as well. And let me cue this up. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. And then Drew says, no matter what you say or believe, the Raiders are going to be a pain in every team's butt this year. It certainly will because no, because nobody wants to go to Vegas and play football. What do you want to do in Vegas? You want to do cocaine off of hookers' butts and go to the strip, strip, strip club and gamble away your millions of dollars, right? Be like Phil Ivy and hustle, hustle MGM or like, like out there. And one last comment for head for our first break here. First half hour is up here on on the man hour. Drew says, "No, your ribs would be broken if you got hit hit like that too." You're absolutely right. It's he's still injury prone. I got strong bones. I've never broke broken a bone before in my life knock on wood I mean I've torn some ligaments and shit like that but I've never broken bones and with and with that and, and with that and with that being said once you start breaking bones you're you become injury prone whether it's ankles or ribs or whatever when you cannot play a full 17 game season in an NFL season Carson Wentz you are deemed injury prone I think right now Tua gets that injury prone uh, uh um, stigma on 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 him so Drew says that's if the management doesn't stick their finger in the pot and interfere too much. The GM can do their job. See, and I don't. I, this is referencing to the Raiders. Uh, 
obviously. I don't think Junior really interferes too much. I think Junior lets the uh, GM do their thing, let you know uh, John Gruden do do his thing, and he just worries about putting DJ in the south in the south south end zone. He is not no um, Jerry Jones. But guys, we are going to take our first break of the night. If you are going to miss any part of the show whatsoever, be sure to head at our manalradio.com. Check out the podcast as we will upload the podcast after each form, after each show, I should should should, should say. Uh, we are live every Sunday through Thursday at youtube.com forward slash man hour. And of course, we do upload the clips each and every day over there at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., and 5 p.m. every Sunday through Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I throw something in special in for you. 8 o'clock, we also upload. So we, we upload five to six times a day over there. But guys, the nice episode is brought to you by pickamores.com. Head over to www.pickamores.com. That's P I C K E M W A R S.com. Link is, link is in the bio. Check them out. Play for free and win some real money over there, guys. We'll be right back here on the Man Hour. Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckkeister here with you live, Ron, on Cut Sports Talk. Head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page and, of course, check out the blog section as well. It is time for some NFL power rankings with Graham Wallace himself. So we'll bring, we'll bring him on momentarily. But these NFL, this section of the Man Hour is brought to you by Yeats Sunglasses. Go to yeatsoriginal.com and use promo code MANHOUR and they'll match up to 20% or they'll take off 20% of your order of amazing sunglasses here. So let's go ahead and bring on Mr. Wallace himself at Bus Wallace on the old Twitter machine. What's going on, at man? Yeah, good to be with you, uh, with you, Buck. Uh, another exciting week of NFL football, and I'm happy to break it down with you uh, once again. Yeah, so uh, if you guys are following us on Twitter, which you should be, man underscore hour underscore uh, radio, and of course, at Bus Wallace on the old Twitter machine. We have given you guys the first, or, or I said I should say the bottom sixteen. Uh, and if you want to find out if your team ranks in the bottom sixteen, which most of, most of your teams do, because you know you, you guys are all not Packer fans. Uh, so, which as you can see, I got my cheese head here now. I, I'm not a Packers fan, but I had the most awesomest time up there at the old uh, Lambeau Field. So I, I got to support them. So how? how for, first things first. Give yourself a shameless plug. Where where can they find your blogs and everything else? Yeah, no doubt. Um, so I just started writing for jaysjournal.com. Uh, so you could find uh, find the uh, my articles there, jaysjournal.com. Uh, please follow me on Twitter, uh, at Bus Wallace. Uh, the B and the W are uh, hyphen, uh, excuse me, capitalized. You can also find me on Instagram, Bus Wallace, all lowercase. Uh, 
bringing you content uh, a few times a week. Definitely plug in these power rankings, which I'm uh, pretty stoked to uh, be doing with uh, you guys all season. Yeah, so so he 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 does write around the write about the Toronto Blue Jays, which I actually have them on right now. So I'm kind of excited to be watching that game in the background uh, during the breaks here. So where do you want to start? Tonight, do you want to start at number one? Do you want to start at number sixteen? Number ten? What do you want to do tonight? Wow, it's up. To, it's up to me. Uh, it's up to you. Ball's in your court. Okay. Well, I think we should maybe build up to number one. We'll we'll uh, start okay. with the the start or the. I guess we'll start with sixteen and and we'll we'll build up to that uh, crescendo, if you will. For those, Definitely, uh, opera fans out there. That's, let's get it from a uh, forte up to a what's the double forte called? uh ma- matzo piano something like that yeah i, I can't go. really remember <laughs> i haven't played band in so long but yeah. I-, I just remember yeah. forte last yeah. possible <laughs> yeah it's right. been a while since i've had to use those terms i didn't <laughs> think i'd be bringing them out tonight but hey, all right we well are. let's get loud man let's yeah. let get loud who do you got coming in at number six 16 Okay, number 16, uh, coming off a really impressive comeback win uh, over the Seattle Seahawks, Tennessee Titans. They looked like they were dead and and gone in this game. Um, and they somehow found a way to come back. Uh, Derrick Henry, uh, this guy is a beast. 237 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Uh, Tannehill had some nice moments in this game as well. Um, really impressive win. I, I think I maybe had them drop a little bit too far in the rankings last week, but uh, this is a team I really liked over the last couple seasons. I'm not sure if they're the same team, uh, but certainly an impressive win uh, on Sunday. Yeah, what was most impressive to me is what they're that they're down by 20 points in the second half, and they didn't panic. They didn't start throwing the ball like all over the field. What they do, they turned and handed to handed to King Henry. I, I, I can't. And like, I was kind of looking in the back, like I was, you know, passively watching the game because the Chiefs was, you know, I was getting ready for the, for the Chiefs game. Sure. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, are they just consented, like losing this, losing this, like this game? And the next thing you know, is in freaking overtime. I'm like, what the hell is going on? But, but yeah, I mean, coming in at number 16, I mean, that's, that's pretty solid. And, and they do have a pretty good test this week versus the occult. So I'm, I'm anxious to see, how that's going to pan out. So who you got coming in at number 15? Okay, number 15, the highest risers this week. Uh, extremely impressive win. A big upset. Carolina Panthers. They just shellacked uh, the New Orleans Saints 26-7. to This defense looks for real. Phil Snow, uh, underrated defensive coordinator. They've got some guys flying around out there. Sam Darnold's looked pretty impressive through two games as well. Uh, obviously, CMC gets a lot of the fantasy love, uh, but they've got some downfield targets as well. Uh, Robbie Anderson, uh, DJ Moore as well. I'm not saying this is a real contender, but I think they're a lot better than people think. I think I like them more than most, and uh, I've been hearing reports out of this team even before the season started that they're going to be better. I, I really believe in Matt Rule. Uh, he he turns teams around. He did it at Temple. He did it at Baylor. Uh, I think he could do it in the NFL as well. Yeah, and and like uh, I can obviously he has proven this, and many people are, are they are already jumping on this pan on this Panthers team saying, "Oh, I had them since week two or since like week one, yada yada yada." They're 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 they are going to be great, but they do have a true test coming up this week, and like I'm kind of concerned about the Saints just because you know they they come out firing off on all c- cylinders versus the Packers. Like obviously the Packers were misfiring on like everything. Yeah. So uh, we'll see where your Saints land. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. No, so the Saints, you know, you had them fall way down to number eighteen. So yeah, they, like we've already posted that. So was that win versus the Saints that good? I uh, mean, like we will obviously see move moving forward. But you said, but you said the Panthers are the highest riders as they should be. C- coming in at number fourteen, who do you got? I got another team that's on the rise, uh, seemingly uh, the Denver Broncos. I didn't want to push them up too far for for beating the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I have as a, a you know bottom two team in the NFL right now. Um, but they're getting the job done. They've only allowed 13 points uh, in each of their first two games. Teddy Bridgewater's been efficient. Uh, they've got the run game going. I think this could be a top. I don't know if I'm ready to say top five, but definitely top, say, six or eight defensive unit overall as far as yeah. uh, yards are uh, allowed. I think Vic Fangio, they're finally they're giving some their head coaches a, a bit of patience. I believe this is his third year uh, with the team. So 
Um, it's really given them a chance to kind of build that culture. And they seem like they're going to be a, a tough team to play with. Um, I don't know if they're a real contender either, similar to the Panthers, but they're certainly a, a tough team to play against. Yeah, we will find out this week when they do travel to Arrowhead and and, 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 and play the Chiefs. So I actually had the Broncos as a sleeper team this year, kind of backing their way into the playoffs. So seeing them up there kind of makes my pick not so bad and not so scary, right? So coming in yeah. at coming in at number 13, you do have the Dallas Cowboys after a big win in yes, L.A. Sir. Talk about that. Yeah, I, I think it was a good win. Um, I, I, you know, even the first week they were competitive against the uh, defending Super Bowl champions. Um, I think it's all there for them. You know, Dak Prescott, he, he's back from the injury. He doesn't look like he's got too many limitations. Tony Pollard, how about him with a hundred yard rushing game yeah. and just about 11 carries, I think. So that was pretty impressive. They've got a nice receiving core, CeeDee Lamb, um, Amari Cooper. I think Micah Parsons has a chance to be defensive rookie of the year. He was flying all over the field. They have yeah. him lining up in a lot of different, uh, different spots on the field, which is kind of cool to see. And I think they did enough to the secondary uh, buck that they're able to uh, be maybe somewhere in the middle of the league. And if they could be a, say a top six or eight or top five, even offense, uh, this is going to be a playoff team and very likely it'll be the NFC East division winner. Yeah. And, uh, and it's kind of funny that you bring up Tony Pollard because I think Mike McCarty is learning that he has a one, two punch uh, in the, in the back the with Zeke and t- t- Tony, kind of like a thunder and lightning high up a thing here. Yeah. So coming in at number 12, who do you got? So I got a, a couple, uh, one of the teams that plummeted. We talked to them about them a little bit earlier is the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, it seemed like they had the game in hand against Tennessee. They were headed for a two and no start. And if they had done so, you would have had four teams in the NFC West. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit with Tory at 2-0. and uh, Obviously, they couldn't finish the job. Uh, Russell Wilson had a couple of shaky moments. The defense didn't look great at times. Uh, they gave up a ton of rushing yards, like I was saying, uh, to King Henry. Uh, so that caused them to uh, take a bit of a tumble this week. Still a top 12 team. I still think this is a playoff team. Um, but with them being uh, now the fourth best team as far as record in that division, it was tough for me to... Uh, have them be in the top 10. Yeah. So a uh, strange fact here is every time the Seattle Seahawks go one and one and they lose week two, they make it to the Super Bowl. So kind of just throwing, they're throwing it out there. So every time they've made it to the Super Bowl in the last, I think it's like 20 years or whatever it was, they won week one and they lost week two. So maybe this is a su- Super Bowl bound year for the Seahawks. So coming in at, at number 11, you do have this Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, and they dropped a lot, and this was even before yeah. the big the uh, big news came out that Big Ben tore it that tore tore his pec and may not be ready for Sunday. So talk a little bit about your number eleven pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I had a bit of a tough time with this. Um, you know, I think I may have ranked them a bit too high uh, following their their impressive Week One win over the Bills. Um, you know, it wasn't a terrible loss, but it was their home opener. They lost by nine to the Raiders, who a lot of people, uh, they're not sure how good they're going to be. They had some really nice moments over the last couple of seasons, and they always seem to kind of blow it when when the chips are, uh, the stakes are at their highest, if you will. So I think I had them ranked too high. I didn't want to kill them too much for this, for this loss, but uh, it was a bit of a setback. And we've seen... Uh, the Steelers backup quarterbacks over the last few years. Uh, Mason Rudolph does nothing to get me excited uh, other right. than, you know, get a helmet thrown at him or whatever, uh, <laughs> or possibly make a racist remark. We don't know if he did that, but uh, he's just not an exciting player. And if, if they have to go to him to, for a game or two, um, that's going to be some tough sledding for them. Also, hasn't I haven't been terribly impressed with the uh, the rookie r- running back, uh, Najee Harris, uh, out of Alabama. So he hasn't had a ton of yards. He had a nice stiff arm, but I really yeah. thought he would be a bit more productive so far. Yeah, he uh, kind of he kind of re- reminds me of like OBJ, like people hyped him up for that one big catch and uh, really really all Harris has done was a stiff arm in it and then a dive into the end zone. Other right. than that, he hasn't been a whole lot. So on the flip side of that coin, the Steelers do have Dwayne Haskins still as a quarter quarterback as well, so maybe right. he could yep. I, I don't know, find his footing there in P- Pittsburgh. I don't know, but Maybe. Who do you got coming in at number 10? This is where all the fun starts. Yeah, it sure does. And and this has been, I think, the most fun team in the NFL so far. And perhaps the most fun player. Arizona Cardinals, you know I'm talking about Kyler Murray. And yeah. I'm going to start the Kyler Murray for MVP campaign right now. Wow. Uh, 400 yards, 
passing. I know he had a couple interceptions in this game, but this guy could do it all. To me, he's like Lamar Jackson, uh, kind of like 2.0, but he's not running around looking to run, although he can do that. He's keeping his eyes downfield. He had that really impressive throw on the run to Rondale Moore about uh, at least 50 yards in the air. Yeah. Really a sight to behold. Um, so, you know, I, I really like the look of this team. Um, you know, they didn't have necessarily a huge, impressive win over the Minnesota Vikings. That was a game they were expected to win. They just about lost. They had to get the uh, Minnesota always blows the kicks at the end of the game, right? So that happened again. Yeah. And uh, they were the beneficiary of that. But I like what I've seen so far. I think they've done enough and they've been a really fun team, one of the more explosive teams to merit uh, a spot in the top 10, albeit uh, at number 10. Yeah, so uh, a comment came in here said hashtag too soon. So you are uh, buying the Cardinals a little too soon, he says. So Damien, maybe, maybe not. So we will we will see moving forward here. I, I don't, I'm not sure who the cards play next week. I don't have their schedule in front of me, but we are consistently talking about how great the NFC West is. And then at number nine, you have another NFC West team coming in there. Who do you got? Yeah, that's right. Uh, San Francisco 49ers. Uh, a lot of people would probably say, well, you got to have them uh, maybe in the top six or seven or even in the top five. Uh, to me, they, they beat the Eagles 17-11, not a terribly impressive win. And against an appoint, opponent who really isn't in a very high standings uh, as far as my rankings are concerned right now. Um, I still think this is a team that can go far. I think the defense is looking a lot like it did a couple years ago. Um, excuse me, if Jimmy G can stay healthy you know he's going to be productive, but that's been the main question throughout his right. career. He has a hard time staying on the field. Um, so I just moved them up to one spot. You'll find that's a bit of a trend uh, with teams that are ranked high at, that get wins over lower ranked opponents. I usually don't want to move them up too high, especially if they are uh, in that top 10. You really got to earn your spot in my top five. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and uh, just to throw some uh, facts out there is you, you, you do have the Eagles at 21 in your power rankings and you guys would already know that if you're following us on twitter be sure to follow him at bus wallace on the twitter machine so uh the one thing that concerns me about the 49ers uh, like a like a little bit is i think they're going to stick to that uh two quarterback system and 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 i think that ultimately is going to hurt them in the end uh be be more hurtful than beneficial maybe jimmy g might be able to be, be healthy for 17 games but on the flip side you're never going to really have a rhythm and maybe a nine and eight season but only time i will tell who do you got coming in at number eight uh just real quick i think the two quarterback system could keep defenses off balance conversely but okay. I, I know what you're saying uh number eight i got the cleveland browns uh they were able to come up with their first win of the season again not a terribly impressive win uh over the houston texans I thought Houston battled in this game, but uh, they did enough to win. Uh, it, it, it's a big thing to get your first win of the season. Um, you know, I, I think this team definitely still has high hopes. I do think they're a dark horse, uh, you know, Super Bowl contender. Um, and it's kind of all all there for them, but they're going to have to beat some better teams in, in order to kind of inch their way up towards that top spot. So let me go totally off topic here, a just for a second. Sure. Do you, do you think people are maybe sleeping on the Texans a tad bit just because Deshaun Watson isn't their starting quarterback, and maybe the team has like a chip on their shoulder with something to prove, like like hey, there's another 50, 51 guys here, just not one, you know. Yeah, you know, people were talking about the Houston Texans roster as if it was like, you know, the expansion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, like one of the worst rosters in NFL history. Right. And, and I don't really see it. I see a team that's been maybe they don't have big name guys or whatever. Uh, but Tyrod Taylor has proven himself to be a solid quarterback, certainly not a top flight starting quarterback, but he definitely be one of the better backups. And, you know, he led the Buffalo Bills to the playoffs a few years ago uh, with a nine and seven record. He throws a good deep ball. He's an athletic guy. I know he's had some bad luck and he wasn't able to stay on the field either. We saw Davis Mills in at the quarterback. He's very green. I think we're going to see that tomorrow, tomorrow night. Uh, they're playing in the Thursday night game against Carolina. He has, he didn't get a lot of starts under his belt in college football. Um, so that's the part that kind of concerns me. I think Tyrod Taylor was the perfect guy to kind of veteran pre presence to kind of steer the ship. Um, I, I don't know how much that gets you the whole us against the world. If, if you do have a roster that's not as talented as the others, um, I think it's going to be a long season uh, in Houston, but 
so far they've impressed me. Uh, you know, they they beat the Jacksonville Jaguars by 16 points, and then they lost to Cleveland by 10 points in a game they were competitive almost throughout. So yeah. uh, pretty good start uh, for, for the Texans. All right, so just a recap of the top 10 here. At number 10, he has the Arizona Cardinals. At number 9, he has the San Francisco 49ers. Number 8, he has the Cleveland Browns. Who you got coming in at number 7? So uh, about to take a drink there oh, <laughs> a little sorry. too fast for you. That's okay. <laughs> so number seven, I, I got the green Bay Packers, another kind of bounce back team. I got to give you the gears a little bit here. You were calling a uh, Detroit lions victory on Monday <laughs> night. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that you was did. Very, very bold of you, but Hey, it looked like <laughs> it was going to happen. I was sitting there at halftime and I was like, yeah. you know, Detroit Lions have played a heck of a, a first half. They put themselves in a position to win. Unfortunately, they were shut out in the second half, and Rodgers kind of put it together. Uh, he looked pretty impressive out there uh, to me. He it did. was also revealed that his hair is, is for some kind of Halloween costume, so we'll have to t- stay tuned for that for another <laughs> uh, month or so. That's some real commitment uh, by Rodgers. So, um, you know, that's a, a, a game that they had to win. Uh, but but they did win it. So and you'll see the trend here of just uh, good teams that have moving up one spot because they beat uh, lousy teams. Yeah. So, I mean, the Packers definitely look like a top 10 team because the, obviously the Detroit Lions are a very, very good team. They just got a bad draw here the first few weeks of the season. So Cardinals at 10, 49ers at number nine, Browns at eight, Packers coming in at number seven. Number six, you got another big riser here. Who do you got? I got... The Raider. Oh man, you know I got I got to say, Buck, I struggled with this. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. If I'm being completely honest and and peeling the curtain back, I actually had them a couple spots higher, but I just couldn't do it in good faith. I don't think they're better than some of those teams I have above them. But simply put, there's not a team that's had a more impressive start to the season uh, than the Las Vegas Raiders. They beat. The Baltimore Ravens on Monday night came back to to win that game, forced a couple of fumbles by Lamar Jackson. And then they beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, who I had as my fourth ranked team, albeit maybe I did have them ranked a little bit high, but they beat them by nine points. This was not a last second touchdown or right. anything. Um, Derek Carr threw for a- almost over 300 yards in the second half. So this is very impressive. I don't know if they can do it for a whole season. That's not what I'm saying right now, but as of this moment, they look like a top six team. That's that's why I have them ranked there. I don't know if they'll be there at the end of the season, but they look mighty impressive uh, so far. Yeah, we were actually talking about the Raiders a little bit earlier. And, you know, a- every time people start to buy stock into the Raiders, I think then their stock goes down, down, down. Uh, but we, but like, but, but like you said, only time will tell. But the, well, well, what is also more impressive about that Pittsburgh Steelers win is this was a one o'clock game on the East Coast. So they traveled coast to coast and they played that early games, which is like 10 o'clock their time, and yep. they put it to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, let's just be flat out honest. The Steelers did not look good in that game at all, and the Raiders were clicking on all cylinders. So that yep. so that gives us five teams left here in the top five. All right. You like you have the Chiefs, Rams, Bucks, Bills, and Ravens left to kind of shuffle them up and put them in some type of order. You got it. So who do you got coming in at number five? Okay, number five. I think the most impressive win of week two, uh, Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it was a fantastic game there on Sunday Night Football. Um, Chiefs seemed like they had the game in hand. Um, Mahomes was going down for a sack. He threw a really dumb interception. He tried to get it to Kelsey. He couldn't quite get enough on it. Ravens got the interception, and to me, the game completely changed at that point in time. I really yeah. love what I saw out of Lamar Jackson, the jump pass. He had over 100 yards rushing. He also had well over 200 yards passing, which a lot of people think that's a part of his game he needs to develop. Right. Um, I like what I've saw, uh, seen out of the defense. Uh, Owe, the, the rookie, uh, he didn't have a lot of production at Penn State, but he made a humongous play uh, with the sack and recovery of Clyde Edwards-Hilaire to kind of seal that victory. And then, of course, there's the, the fourth down gamble. I wouldn't really call call it a gamble they had to go for it there john harbaugh should we go for it uh, hell yeah we should go for it so uh, i i love what i saw out of the ravens a really good back win for them uh after the the tough loss on on the opening monday night game against the raiders so who is your who is your nfl team like do you have an nfl team i i do i i've been kind of keeping it uh close to the vest but i i'm a buffalo bills fan oh, oh okay so so let's say you are a Buffalo Bills fan and they and they're playing the Kansas City Chiefs and it's fourth and one and you're up 36 to 35 and you elect not to go for it on fourth down and you punt the ball ball away and the Chiefs come down and score. Are you going to be upset with your coach at that point in time? Mm, 
Well, I just I, I think I would be because if you're punting the ball back to Mahomes, you're, you're asking for something bad to happen. Uh, there was one time out left, like 30 seconds, I think it was, whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I guess it was a, a dicey call by Harbaugh, but it just shows how much confidence and faith he has uh in his guy lamar jackson he said do you want to go for it and 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 that's been all over all over the internet yeah. over the last few days and i thought that was a really cool moment he, he did that a couple of years ago against the seattle seahawks same thing should we go for it do you guys do you want to go for it here with the game on the line um i think i would be a little bit ticked off because if you have a chance to win the game you have to take that chance now sometimes you might want to take it with your defense or your special teams or whatever but you want to line up there and drive it down their throat and, and kind of take their will away uh, to win yep. the football game. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, and the, that and that is the biggest knock of the Kansas City Chiefs is their run defense, absolutely horrible. And we saw it. Lamar Jackson was slicing and dicing them the whole fourth quarter, and it was yep. pissing me off to be flat out honest. I'm like, how can you guys not stop this? You know it's coming. How can you not stop it? But just to recap, at ten you have the Cardinals, nine you have the Forty ers Number eight, you have the Cleveland Browns. Number seven, you have the Green Bay Packers. Go, Pack, go, as my wife is making me say. Uh, six are the Raiders. Five, you have the Ravens. Who do you got coming in at number four? Well, I got my Buffalo Bills. Uh, very impressive, 35 to nothing shutout victory uh, over the Miami Dolphins. And, you know, it. I saw a stat I thought was really cool. I'm going to throw it out right now. It was their largest shutout victory over Miami since 1966. Wow. Uh, these are division rivals for over over 50 years, so that's really impressive. I like what I saw to Josh Allen. Still, uh, he missed a couple passes that he normally does, but I saw what I needed to see. Devin Singletary with that long touchdown run to open the scoring in the, in the first quarter. And the pass rush was all over uh, Tegavailoa and then uh, Jacoby Brissett throughout the entire afternoon um gregory russo who's the first round draft pick they kind of took a bit of a flyer on him late in the first round people weren't sure if he was going to be a bust or not he's looked really good and uh, aj epinesa who was a second round pick out of iowa a couple of years ago they both flashed in this game and um they look like the you know super bowl contender that i kind of had them pegged as uh coming into the season yeah so that leaves us with three teams here and Team number three is you do have the Kansas City Chiefs. I like I already see people on the Twitter machine saying that how in the hell can you have the Ravens below the Chiefs? So how can you have the Ravens below the Chiefs when the Chiefs are coming in at 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 number three? Yeah, I understand that. Uh, but people got to understand that. Uh, you know, I had the Ravens as my number twelve team last week. I, I moved them up seven spots. I thought that was very. I, I thought that was. Uh, I don't want to say generous, but I think that's what they deserve. If if Kansas City and Baltimore line up and play eight more times, I think Kansas City probably wins six of them. I, I think Kansas City is still a better team. Is their run defense a little leaky? Yeah, it is. Um, leaky, but leaky. yeah, a lot leaky. <laughs> a, lot, a lot leaky. It, it might not tighten up until you said maybe week 12 or 13. They always seem to, to work like that. Um, but I, I have a lot of faith in Mahomes still. Like, like I was saying, they had this game in hand. He did something he almost never does. He threw a really stupid pass, and, and that really turned the tide of this game. Um, so I, I get what people are saying. How can you have a team ahead of another team that they just beat? Uh, I usually play by the, that kind of same logic. But I have the Chiefs as like a surefire you know, Super Bowl contender, whereas I have Baltimore more as a you know dark horse pick. I still think Lamar Jackson – has some things to prove when it comes to the playoffs. One and three career record in the playoffs. And he was 0-3 coming into this game when he was face to face with Mahomes. So I, I really like the Ravens. I like the running game. Tyson Williams and company are getting the job done well over 200 yards rushing. Um, I, I like them a lot. I, I just like the Chiefs a little bit better. Yeah, so uh, so I totally ag agree with you 100%. Like when you have the Chiefs at two and then the Ravens at 12 last week, I mean, you really can't just flip, flip flop them because that's just, that's just not the way the rankings work there, gentlemen. So recap the top 10 before we give us our top two here of the NFL power rankings by at Bus Wallace himself on Twitter. Uh, you have the Cards at 10, Niners at nine, the Browns at number eight, the Packers at seven, the Raiders at number six, the Baltimore Ravens at number five. Your Buffalo Bills at four, Kansas City Chiefs at number three. Coming in at number two, who do you got? I got the Los Angeles Rams. Um, it was kind of an up and down win for them over the Indianapolis Colts. They they were up. They had the weird snap on the on the punt there uh, to Johnny Hecker and ended up getting a get, being a touchdown for the Colts. I think Colts kind of showed some life in this game. Uh, they're they're still 
pretty far down in my rankings, but Rams kind of had to fight back and uh, to win this game. Cooper Cup uh, had a really nice performance. Um, Stafford wasn't as impressive as he was in that first week uh, against the Bears. Obviously, Colts are uh, a little bit better than than the Bears, I think. But um, they, I think, they did enough uh, to get into the that top two. Uh, I still really like this defense. Uh, Sean McVay seems like he's reinvigorated uh, with, with this new quarterback. And uh, I, I definitely think they have a chance to to go all the way. Yeah. And then obviously come in at, at number one, you do have the Tampa Bay Bucks. you know, I mean, to, to be the, to be the best, you got to beat the best. And right now the Bucks are the best, but the Rams and yeah. Bucks face off this week. So, could we see some flip flip flopping here? Do you, do you think that the Rams beat the Bucks? I, I think it's definitely possible. Uh, Bucks look mighty impressive. They had the, the, I think Edwards with two, two pick sixes in one game that hasn't happened yeah. in, in quite some time. I feel obviously the offense is going uh, at, at full uh, capabilities as well. Uh, Brady with nine touchdowns already. I believe he had five on Sunday. Um, but if the Rams win that game uh, and they, and they win it in impressive fashion, I definitely think they have the, they can they can move into that top spot, but uh, obviously you'll have to tune in uh, next week to see. Right. So so do you have any uh, questions about the Bucks offense though? Because I mean, like the Falcons were battling with them for three quarters, and then obviously the fourth the fourth quarter they they opened the floodgates on them because you know typical Atlanta Falcons fat fashion they only played three quarters. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there any concern like with that like with the with the uh, Bucks at all? I think it's really hard. I'd be really nitpicking here. I think they got a uh, an, an interception uh, about midway through the third quarter that really helped them pull away. And then I saw Atlanta starting to, to battle back, and I'm like, wait a second. You know, maybe the Falcons aren't as bad as I thought they were. But like you said, uh, fourth quarter, they completely fell apart. Um, yeah. I'd be really be nitpicking if, if I tried to poke many holes in this team. My main thing is, you know, you've got Gronkowski, you've got Antonio Brown, uh, Godwin, Evans. Uh, is there enough, you know, sp- to spread the ball around? But it seems like there's no real big egos, even though there there is a lot of high profile players on, on right. this offense. I, I think Brady is is going to be the captain uh, of this of this team, as as uh, is obvious, and he's going to make sure everyone kind of like gets fed, if you will. Yeah, you are absolutely one hundred percent correct on that I mean if we play thirds instead of quarters the falcons would probably be at least a five-time super bowl champion easily <laughs> if we played thirds but guys that is going to be it for the week two power rankings here uh, you can catch the full list on our twitter machine or facebook page uh, i will upload the for the like the last six sixteen their first thing tomorrow morning but mr bus wallace himself at bus wallace on twitter machine who do you got winning Thursday night? I like the Carolina Panthers. I, like I was saying a little bit before, I like this defense. I think Phil Snow, uh, the defensive coordinator, is a guy you're going to see a little bit more. He's a little bit older. Uh, he's 65 years of age. He's finally getting his first chance at, at really a high-profile job. He's one of Matt Rule's guys. You're going to see them flying around the field. I think they're going to really mix things up for Davis Mills, uh, the Houston quarterback, in his first uh, career game. I, I like Panthers uh, in this game, Uh by a couple of touchdowns, I think. Yeah. So let me ask you one question here. Uh, over here on youtube.com forward slash man hour, Damien Dresser asks, Are we sleeping on Washington football team? I know my answer. What is your answer? You know what? I, I like Washington. Uh, I, I really like the defense. I like Chase Young. Um, I really like what I saw out of Taylor Heineke on Thursday night. Um, if I'm being honest here, after I got past the first few teams in the teens it was a a lot of teams that were kind of in in a bundle together um you know beating the giants is is really not in a really extremely impressive win especially when they actually lost the game and if it wasn't for uh, dexter lawrence jumping offside they would have lost that game um i I see this as a round of 500 team with fitz magic or not i actually think heineke can get the job done for them i like antonio gibson i like some of the receivers as well i like ron rivera as a coach i think this is a hard-nosed tough team i just don't know if if they have enough explosive plays in them um so i I, somewhere around the middle if they could creep close to that top 10 i think that's kind of the ceiling uh for, for this squad yeah so you actually have them ranked at 20th and that's up from last week uh you know but guys tory anderson had the washington football team going 13 and 4 this season and just running the east and like going to the super bowl they are a 500 team at best they are 
like I think nine wins is their ceiling, just like what you what like you 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 said. Yeah, that is just their ceiling. Their defense is not as good as it was last year, and their offense is. I think overrated a tad bit maybe just because like people were buying into those receivers and the running running back and oh Fitz Fitz is going to lead us to the promised land and do this this and this guys he's been on like seventeen NFL teams for a reason. He's well, and he's not- never <laughs> quarterbacked a team to the playoffs ever. Yeah, I think the closest he, he came was with the Jets, ten wins, and they and they blew it in the last game of the season. So yeah, you're right. absolutely correct on that. I mean, yeah. guys, Fitz is not a save save save. There's a reason why they call him a journeyman. He's good for three games. He'll like he'll throw for five, four, five hundred yards in those three games, and then what does he do <laughs> for the rest? He sucks. Yeah, that's, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. But man, thank you, you for it. joining us. As always, we'll talk to you next week. And uh, guys, be sure to follow uh, Mr. Wallace on the old Twitter machine at Bus Wallace on Twitter and Instagram, and be sure to like his blogs as well, guys. Thank you for joining for joining me, man. Okay, you got it, Buck. We'll see you next week. All right, yes, sir. All right, guys, that is going to be it for our NFL Week 2 Power Rankings. Like I said, I have the complete list over on our Twitter uh, at man underscore hour underscore radio on Twitter. And, of course, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash man hour sports talk. We are up against our neck break here going into hour number two, guys. We are going to talk some more NFL because you know what? It is the NFL season, and NFL season is, is hitting hot. And Wednesdays are the most busiest days of the NFL work week. So, guys, stay tuned. We'll be right back here on the Man Hour. Find the break. Find the break. There it is. Hey there, Mr. White T-shirt wearer, dude. Mr. White shirt wearer, dude. Do you wear the same shirt every day? The same shirt every day. Do you do the same things every day? The same thing every day. Don't you worry, Mr. White shirt wearer, dude. Now with the Man Hour merch, you can spice up your style each and every day. From hats. Two beanies, two shirts. We got you covered, Mr. White and Sharon. Shop at manhourradio.com. T shirts start at $15. Shop at Why, thank you, manhourradio.com, for this awesome merch. Hats, t shirts, $15. You can't go wrong. Lamar Jackson is trash. I'm not saying he is the worst quarterback in the league, but he is definitely not the best quarterback in the league. When you say somebody is trash, it is it is based off the perception of the general public. Man Hour Nation brought to you by Brooks Roofing and Siding. Contact them at 812-868-7663 or online at brooksroofingin.com. Brooks Roofing and Siding, protection you need when nature strikes. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckcaster here. Find Solo Night. Head over to manhourradio.com and check out the merchandise page. That would be much appreciated. But it is that time of hour, hour number two of Man Hour. And we got to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors and uh, pro- providers here at the Man Hour Radio. Obviously, the number one supporter of tonight's show is pickemwars.com. That's www.pickemwars.com. Pickemwars.com. You guys can sign up for free over there to pick all the, uh, the NFL games, college games, some UFC fights as, fights, as, fights as, as well. 
And if you place in the top 10 of, of your picks, you get to win real money. Up to $500 a week is given away out there oh, at Picklemores.com. And you can play for absolutely free right now. Um, just tell them that Man Hour Nation sent you over there, and they will treat you great over there. I actually won $250 last week on like on my pick. So I'm very, very excited at, at, like, at that. We also got to give a big shout out to at Blue Coolers. So at, at Blue Coolers, we believe best in the class quality doesn't have to be tied to high prices. We set out to deliver a cooler that can provide, that can provide high quality at half the price of the competition. We are proud to say that we have done exactly that. We are consistently stri- striving to improve and launch better products with also drinkware, 72 hour emergency kits, accessories, and, and more. To make it simple and short, we are a couple of hardworking Americans that love enjoying the outdoors. So, damn it, go to bluecoolers.com and use promo code MANHOURRADIO and they'll match up to 50% on your purchase. That's bluecoolers.com. Also, guys, we are brought to you by Skull Candy as well. Skull Candy makes best headphones, earbuds, and gaming headsets with all with lifetime warranties. Skull Candy provides many types of audio accessories, including headsets, sports ear, ear, earbuds, Xbox gaming headsets, PlayStation headsets, DJ headsets, and of course, iPod and MP3 head, headphones. Head over to SkullCandy.com and use promo code MANHOUR and they'll match up to 20% on your purchase. So 20% off at SkullCandy.com and BlueCoolers.com. Promo code MANHOUR radio guys and they will treat you right over there at both of those locations let me go ahead and bring you back onto screen here guys i gotta get that out there oh we're also brought to buy yeet sunglasses go to yeetsoriginal.com use promo code man hour they'll take up 20 percent off of your purchase with promo code man hour all this stuff is in the description guys so our number two guys we are here under the way we gave you guys the nfl power rankings at bus wallace on twitter machine gives us his top 16 power rankings right here on the man hour Every Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday morning, we release the bottom 16 to figure out where your teams are at. So we we actually do do all 32 teams. So he does great work over there. Very, very proud of him. You can find him on Twitter and, and Instagram at Bus Wallace. So like I said, Wednesdays are the busiest days in the NFL. And we've seen Tua is not playing this this week. Uh, Andy Dalton's not playing this week. And another Another big injury. Imagine that. Of course, week two is riddled with injuries. But that is Mr. Big Ben Roethlisberger. He tore his back sometime during week two. He doesn't know when or he doesn't know how. But he took a ass beating on week two uh, versus the Raiders, and somehow he tore his peck. So he is questionable for week three still. We, we, we don't know if he's going to play or yet or not. It's still Wednesday. You know, he has still has four days to heal and he, he obviously won't be practicing probably till Saturday at the earliest, or maybe Friday, I guess, but probably Saturday. Just do a walkthrough if he's able to play. But the question is going to be arised here. We, last year here on the Man Hour, me and Combs and Mike LeBlanc sat here and said that the Pittsburgh Steelers should draft a quarterback. Big Ben is done because, you know, they were doing 11-0, and and then all of a sudden they dropped five five games in a row or six games in like in a like in a row. And then, bada bing, bada boom, we're like, Big Ben's done. He retired and stick a fork in him. But he never retired. He came back. But the Pittsburgh Steelers never drafted a quarterback. And we did our we did our live draft draft show, all four of us, Combs, Tory, and Wyatt, and myself. We all sat here and was like, man, why are the Pittsburgh Steelers not going to draft a quarterback? Is this going to come back and bite him in the butt? And sure as shit, guys, I think it is. I think... By week three of the 2021 NFL season, the Pittsburgh Steelers not drafting a quarterback bit them in the ass. So right now, let's say Big Ben is not able to play. We sat here with with Graham Wallace, and he said that, you know, hey, they got Mason Rudolph still. They got uh, Dwayne Haskins still. (laughs) Guys, if you are relying your season on Mason Rudolph, the Pittsburgh Steelers, you guys are done. You guys are going to – Mike Tom is going to have his first losing season ever. You guys are going to miss the playoffs, and you guys are going to be absolutely re- – Mike Mason Rudolph is trash. I would take Lamar Jackson over Mason Rudolph, and they both and they both raunch and trash and haven't been taken out in 10 days. They got coffee grinds at the bottom. Hell, they might even got some cat, 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 cat litter. That, that's how bad Mason Rudolph is. 
so obviously the draft is gone and it's not coming in and again and until April. Speaking of April, we are giving away a free trip to the NFL draft in Vegas, April 2022. All you gotta do is become a member over here at youtube.com forward slash man. I'll click on that join button, become a gold member or higher, and you get free entry into that Vegas trip. We'll be driving at Super Bowl Sunday. Shameless plug there. But we're looking at the quarterback con the quarterback questions right now in the picked versus Steelers. Let's say Big Ben cannot play. Mason Rudolph is not the answer. We don't know if if Dwayne Haskins has his head 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 right back yet or not. We don't know if he is still at the strip club getting wings or doing whatever he's doing, getting COVID, got his mind mind right. We, we, we don't know. So we are looking at free agent quarterbacks. We are looking at quarterbacks that could possibly help the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the first name that comes to mind, guys, first name that comes to mind, Cam Newton. Cam Newton's out there. His little weird outfit with his hair poking out the side of his hat and, I don't know, his dress or whatever. I don't know, whatever he's wearing. But does 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 Cam Newton not fit that Pittsburgh Steelers team to a T? What is Big Ben? He's a big body, strong arm quarterback that can kind of run, right? What is Cam Newton right now? He's a big bodied quarterback that can kind of run right now, that can throw a five yard out route. <laughs> Guys. Cam Newton to Pittsburgh Steelers is a match made in heaven. Let's just be flat, flat out honest. If you do not believe me, think about this. Big Ben and Cam, 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 Cam Newton. Let's just look at the obvious here. Let's look at the body types. Body types are pretty much the same, right? Cam Newton used to be able to run pretty good and maybe not so, so, so much now. You know who else cannot, cannot run? Big Ben. Right, Big Ben can't 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 run anywhere. So it's guys. I, th- I think it's a match made in heaven. Cam Newton to the Pist- to the Pittsburgh Steelers, calling it here first. So calling it here first. Um, Drew says Haskins is still better than Mason Rudolph. I agree with that, Drew. Um, actually, I actually I don't I don't know, man. I I, I don't know because if we think about this. What has Dwayne Haskins done for us, to be honest? You know, uh, he hasn't been very good in, uh, he wasn't very good in Washington. Like, obviously, that's why he got cut. We I mean, not, obviously, the C, the C, C, C word, we, we cannot say the C word, but like, obviously, you know, him going to the strip, strip club and getting the virus doesn't help, but I don't know. Uh, so, um, I see you guys are talking about the taunting calls in the chat. I, I, I'm not watching the, the Notre Dame game right now. I guess I, I'm not for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so as my computer is going crazy here, my screen keeps flashing on and off. I don't know what's 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 going on there. But let's get into some more sports headlines. Let me get that off of the uh, calm here. And uh, obviously, we... Uh, if the cam stories are true, then he is done for life. I don't know what the cam stories are. Um, I, I haven't done much research on that, and I don't even know what the cam stories are. So if, if you could let me know what the cam stories are, I will address that after we talk about the Kansas City D defense because we need to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs defense because obviously we just did our power rankings, and the Kansas City Chiefs are still in the top, top five. Ravens that are at two, and Chiefs are at number three. But... uh. The Kansas City Chiefs defense is trash, guys. Let's just be flat out honest. They are not very good. Yes, I know the Honey Badger, Tyre Matthew, did not play week one. He's still gaining his legs for week two and all this other stuff. But with that being said, I, why is Kansas City Chiefs defense so freaking bad? Like, they have, what, they have, like, 30% of their money wrapped up in the defense alignment. They can't stop the freaking run. Why? What is so bad about the game? Is it the, is it the culture there? Is it uh Spagnola or like, it's it, what is the problem there in Kansas? Like, I don't, I, I don't get it, but obviously we've seen how to beat the Kansas city chiefs and that's, and that's force him into mistakes, get in Patrick Mahomes face, you know, fumble the ball at the end of the, like at, at, at the end of the game, the Ravens beat the chiefs, you know, 
in week two. So the question has to be proposed. Are the Kansas City Chiefs still the team in the AFC? Disclaimer, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Yeah, you you see the Packers stuff. Yeah, what, what, like whatever. But I'm a Kansas City Chiefs guy. Like, let's, let's just be flat out honest. I'm a Kansas City Chiefs guy through and through. My wife says Pack, Packers fan. That's why, that's why this stuff's like, like hanging there because I'm supporting her. But I want to say no. The Kansas City Chiefs are not even a top four team in the AFC right now. They, they are not. I will take the Raiders over them. Yes, the division foe, the Raiders. I would take, obviously, the Baltimore Ravens all over them because, you know, they beat them head-to-head, obviously. Uh, and and then, like, I would take the Cleveland Browns over them, honestly, right now. So there's three. I would take the, um, uh, who else would take? The Buffalo Bills, obviously. You know, I, I think the Buffalo Bills are the best team in the AFC right now. And then I'm going to throw a wild card at you guys. I would take the Denver Broncos over the Kansas City Chiefs right now, too. That's two West teams that I would take over the Kansas City Chiefs. So I would take the Broncos, Chargers, Bills, Browns, and Ravens all over the Kansas City Chiefs right now. For some, I, I, for some reason, I am not in love with this Kansas City Chiefs team at all. I don't know if it's their lack of urgency to win the games because they're talking about oh 17 or no 17 or no yada 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 if it's a lack of just like yeah we're destined to go to the super bowl again like it's hard to get to the fucking super bowl face it it is hard to get there and right now the kansas city chiefs are not playing like they're any sense of urgency or anything like just like that and they need this loss versus the ravens they, they needed a wake-up call hey guys you are not the best team in the afc right now you need to practice harder. You need to show up. Your defense needs to step up and stop sucking. That's what it comes down to. Kansas City Chiefs defense, step up and stop sucking. You guys are getting paid way too much damn money. 30% of the salary. salary cap. Yes, I know Patrick Mahomes making $100 million or whatever it is. Cool. Or $500 million. It, it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's, it's all backloaded, so he's only making like $15 million this year still. Whatever. 33% of the salary cap right now is going to the defense a lot, and you guys cannot stop the freaking run. Jeez.
and welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckhouse, you're here flying solo tonight. The last 10 minutes of the show is going to be all about shop talks. Do you guys want to talk about anything? Let us know here at youtube.com forward slash man hour in the comment section. I'll be gladly to address anything that you guys bring up here. So I did end that last segment here on the Chiefs here a little bit abruptly because I was starting to get heated. And I got to address some, some, some of those comments that were coming in here. He, uh, Damon says a great NFL defense don't need to stop the run anymore. I'm not saying you just got to stop the run, but if you don't get a pass rush, how can you do anything? I mean, like the Kansas City Chiefs weren't, weren't even getting a pass rush. And and if you if you can't even do that, you are getting getting way overpaid to do absolutely nothing and give it up 36 points week in and week out is not a good for that and then Drew and Drew, and Drew says I don't agree that a great uh, that great NFL demon says have to stop the run anymore. Argument is for the Ravens though. Uh, so there are a few teams that rely heavily on the run. Um, Tennessee Titans, AFC team, the Ravens, AFC team, and that's probably about uh, probably about it. So if you want to make it to the Super Bowl, you got to beat those two teams. So you have to be able to stop the run at some point. Now. Kansas City Chiefs and great defense do not go hand in hand at all. Um, so Drew, Drew says the Chiefs got a black eye last week. Yeah, uh, they got popped in the mouth over and over and over. Uh, but on the bright side, they were still in a position to win the game at the end, 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 end of the game. But Clyde Edward O'Hare fumbled the ball away to really to pretty much seal the loss for them. Uh, so uh, Damon says, teams I wouldn't bet, bet the house on. Everyone but the Chiefs, Buccaneers, and Rams. Uh, not for sure what that what that means, but sure. Uh, Drew says Mahomes is great, but contrary to what some people believe, he is still human. He's going to screw up from time to time. Yeah, uh, he made a horrible throw, made a horrible decision. But when you get five hundred million dollars over the next ten years, you do not make that. A, you you are not supposed to make that. Um, Bad mistake. Let's just be honest. It was a horrible mistake. It was a um, Lamar Jackson mistake. If you guys want to go there, uh, Drew says personally, I think the best team in the NFL right now are the Rams. Yeah, I agree. Matthew Stafford and the Rams look pretty damn, pretty damn good. That less, but we are forgetting how great that defense is. They arguably have the best defensive player on their team, and Aaron the Donald, the Donald, and they're just going to get better and better week in and week out, and. <laughs> Damon says, uh, we'll hop it, uh, because, um, uh, Patrick Mahomes sounds like Kermit, Kermit, the, Kermit, the, uh, uh, frog. So if you guys ever heard him talk, he sounds exactly like Kermit, the frog. Uh, Damon says Mahomes is still young. He, he don't get the game like Stafford, Ryan Rogers and Brady, but he is far advanced for his age. Yeah. Uh, guys, this is only his what third full season playing, right? Cause, no fourth fourth full season because first year he sat he sat behind Alex Smith second year he led him to the ASC championship game lost to the pay pay Patriots because uh D Ford lines five yards off off sides and questions like why well, didn't line up on sides next year they won the Super Bowl and last year they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Bucks so yeah this is his fifth year guys so I mean four 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 years as a starter fifth year in the league so definitely agree with that one one hundred percent. But guys, we're going to wrap up Man Hour there tonight. Uh, join us tomorrow. Thursday is the last show of the week. It is the official Pick'em Week, so the whole show is brought to you by Pick'emores.com. The link is in the description, guys. Sign up for free, and you can win real money over there. Just uh, just know that you are picking against the spread. So when you pick the Chiefs-Broncos game and you pick the Chiefs to win, the Chiefs have to win by 6.5 points or whatever it is. I I, I, I don't know no, 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 the spread off the top of my head. But guys, head over to pickamores.com, check it out. Give just sign up for free. I mean that 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 is all we ask. We don't have, you don't have to uh, play, but it's free. You get an opportunity to win money, so why not, right? Guys, that's gonna be it for tonight. This is Michael Blackcaster with Man Hour, ManHourRadio.com. Big shout out to pickamores.com, Geets Original Sunglasses, Blue Coolers, and of course Skull Candy headphones, guys. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place, youtube.com forward slash man hour, 8 p.m. East Coast time. Have a great night.